So we're here trackside in Madeira and I'm here with Leo Kokkonen and he is the founder of Pole Bicycles, the designer of all the bikes that you guys offer. And I'm really pumped to go through some questions with you and find out how you went from a mountain bike enthusiast to a bicycle company founder and bike designer. How do you get from here to there? We're gonna find out, get some riding shots of you. It should be a pretty good afternoon. So you and I have a few things in common. And one of those things is, is sort of a, the kind of area where we grew up, not geographically, but as far as topography goes. You were kind of born and raised and got into mountain biking in an, an XC cross country sort of an area and same with me. And so I'm willing to bet that we kind of got started in the same sort of thing on our hardtail mountain bikes, booting through the woods, burning our lungs to death, trying to go up all those hills so we can get little bits of downhill. Um, I started when I was in my teens in the mid nineties. Were you the same? When did you, when did you start mountain biking? Yeah, I was uh, um, actually 16 when I got my first mountain bike. Okay. I uh, saved money uh, like three years, worked my ass off in the field yeah. or whatever <laughs> I could get, delivered papers. And uh, the last trade of the money I could uh, kind of get from my uh, family and then uh, I started riding that bike everywhere. Obviously we did uh, ride with our like the bikes we get from our parents uh, yeah. young that we did everything we could with them yep. but my first mountain bike was like I f found this brochure uh, in the sports store. Mm. Uh, uh, that time didn't have internet or whatsoever, yeah. ma magazines or whatever. I didn't not even know that there is such thing as downhill biking or whatever. So kind of, we did whatever we could. I break few cranks and stuff like that, <laughs> doing jumps and yeah. uh, and I pedaled to other city like 100 kilometers or something oh, wow. like that to vi yeah. visit my friends and and like it was just uh, for me it was transportation and like fun and yeah well that one bicycle opens up so many doors for yeah. everybody that has a bike right yep. the love for mountain biking has has brought you into an entire career and something you love doing for a job and for your life like that's that's a pretty amazing thing so with your background in industrial design how does that translate into designing and engineering bicycles well, uh, straight away from uh, school, I founded my um, first company, which was industrial design company. And uh, like pretty uh, fast, we got into uh, like complex objects. And we st uh, first we used a lot of engineers to help with the uh, stresses and analysis uh, on uh, on that. Mm -hmm. But um, later on, I just found out that I'm doing a lot of that engineer's work, and it's just kind of a uh, tell me where the strut should be and like I it was pretty obvious because the industrial design uh, education itself it's it focuses uh, the, in the same stuff that we design stuff we engineer stuff mm. but industrial designer is in more of the user experience side yeah. and the engineer focuses on the calculating the stuff but there's a lot of programs that I can use you just need to understand what you need to uh, simulate and then go forward into that and i started getting more into that engineering side of the things because that's what we needed and then yeah. while i was riding mountain bikes i was just thinking about why the bikes are designed that way why there isn't this and that and that option i would like to do because i always look at betterizing things from uh, what they are and uh, when I have my own user experience I would yeah. like to change it a little bit and uh, then we got into I, I got into changing the bikes geometry what I had at the moment and then well there you go it's like I wanted to do my own prototype I didn't think about uh, founding a company around it <laughs> but it kind of uh, like it was a slippery slope yeah. uh, at that time once you realize you were onto something you're like, all right, let's yeah, do this. Yeah. Other people need to ride this. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I uh, got help from uh, uh, from UK BTR Fabrications. Uh, they welded the first prototypes, and mm. and um, we tested those with Matti. Uh, there was uh, we had a session with that where we tested the bikes, and uh, at the time Matti couldn't jump into the pole bicycles, but like he helped me in that founding spot, nice. uh, testing the bike. So you designed your first prototype, you could you saw that it was working on, out on the trail, um, and I, I've seen the numbers and, and the figures from that first bike, and now where we are today, and you've pushed those those numbers and those limits even further from what I can tell with as far as reach numbers, and especially seat tube angle, 
um, which is one of the things I appreciate the most out of these bikes is that, that seat tube angle for climbing it, and even just getting out of your way once the seat drops and you're getting into downhill stuff, I love it. And so there's been some changes since that first prototype. What brought you to those changes from that first bike to say the, the stamina today? We changed to the first prototype uh, because making prototypes, uh, prototypes is really expensive. So at least when you're making the one-off yeah. from your own pocket money to uh, reality, we're yeah. talking about like three or four times more money than one-off welded uh, right. for you. And so, uh, we need to find something, how much it changed. And we compared the, the, the bikes uh, that I, we had at the time, and we can find out that, okay, this changed uh, a bit, but mm. not that much that we thought it would. Mm. So we, I wanted to go even further and then, and further and then further. And then yeah. I've kind of found that now we're finding the limits where it can be. So uh, some people think that we're, crazy off from the like the, the total extreme but what i'm really trying to find is the best solution from the way that i think the bike should ride right so from the middle more safe mm. to go faster and you can push your limits to be safe and that's what i'm searching for not yeah. to be just uh, different yeah. The reason I went to CNC was that we cancelled the carbon fiber project. Mm. But the reason we uh, we're pushing that it's just opens so much more possibilities in, in that. So. Well, you mentioned prototyping. What to get a standard prototype? Stam like uh, like a stamina. We just I started designing that after I got one from Whistler, and mm. now we're actually f shooting that, and it's working. There's a stamina right behind the camera over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so it took me like basically three months three months from zero to hero from zero to <laughs> we're gonna ride it down yeah. the trail in 10 minutes yeah. from now <laughs> that's pretty amazing and so that CNC process has opened that up for you yeah yeah, yeah. and cool. that's like what I what I want I want to go faster forward and and it allows you to create these bikes even in more Finland bikes. yeah as well yeah yeah, yeah in Finland as well so what does the future look like for pole bicycles well, uh, since we have the CNC machining, which opened us a huge opportunity of doing prototypes and other products. Basically, when we make a prototype and when I get it to, like when it works, we can start pretty much immediately uh, producing that bike. Getting so it there's out no, to people. <laughs> yeah, there's no gap of like uh, setting up mass production or whatever. Mm. We can start using the same uh, jigs that we used for the pro prototype immediately for mass production. Then, wow. and, and I really want to uh, create a lot of different bikes. And because it, for us, it doesn't matter if we don't sell that one, we don't need to think about the commercial impact that much as we would be if we, it would be like a mold, carbon fiber mold. Yeah, yeah. And You're investing in that mold yeah, for years, yes, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So now we can we can create a bike that it's only my time that I'm using it as a designer. Yeah. So I need to believe in that product. That's the that's the thing. So we can focus on niche products um, mm -hmm. more. So you can keep refining the process and refining the design and bettering that user experience with any sort of timeline you like, almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking with me. Um, we got some sweet bikes behind the camera there that we should probably go and ride. Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs>